Hi, this is Christian. In this video, I'm going to uh, complete or build this uh, assignment for the sandwich. So uh, we have uh, three, I think three parts, right? There's three parts. One is to create the bread class. We're going to create the sandwich filling class. And then actually four, right? The uh, sandwich class which is um, used for a composition as we discussed in this week's lecture. And then finally, we have the main application to generate these sandwiches. Okay, so if you look at what I have it down the bottom here, I have a sample run to show you what uh, it will look like. Of course, I should have probably, you know, want to call these uh, not bread one, bread two, but maybe like sandwich one, sandwich two, and so on. And then down here is the UML diagram to show you the uh, different pieces or um, you know functions and variables or instance fields in each class. So the sandwich class, <coughs> test sandwich, this is the main application. And um, you're going to instantiate three objects in here, three sandwiches. And then the sandwich class is the one that has the composition, right? So it contains what is composed of the bread and a sandwich filling uh, data field. And then those are mapped to these separate classes over here. Okay? <clears throat> so um, again, this box it just tells you what are the fields, and then these are what are the methods you need to create for each class. And okay, what I'm going to do here is just one of the ways to do this. There are, I'm pretty sure there are many ways to do it, but uh, this is a fairly simple program. So um, the differences may not be that too, too many, but um, it can be done a different way. So I'm just going to show you one way how you can accomplish this. All right. So using this as a guide as well. And if you are kind of like stuck, if you don't know where to begin, just write it out, uh, write out in, in words and in sentences. We call those pseudocode, right? And what I have up here, it's pretty much kind of like pseudocode already. These instructions are pseudocode, right? Kind of. So we're going to create a class called um, bread. And then in the bread class, we're going to have two fields. Um, okay. Uh, and then for like the calories and then the bread type. Okay. So we'll refer to uh, this document as we continue on. So let's go to the IDE. I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. This is the bread class. And uh, before I continue on, I should put this into the package. Uh, we'll call it uh, chapter four um, sandwich. Yeah, that should that should be enough. Okay, so you use that as the package. And then we have more, right? So let me go in here in the sandwich. Create another class for the sandwich filling. And then one more, two more, the sandwich. And then the main program. So this one here is just a test sandwich, but you can call it whatever you want, okay? So I'm just gonna call it test sandwich. I'll follow my instructions there. Um, is that what I call? Yeah, well. Okay, so this is the main main program. Put a note here. Main application. We'll leave that for now. <clears throat> Let's go to the bread class first. So we need private uh, the bread type. This would be a string, forgot to put that there. And then we have one for the calorie. So calories are usually measured in um, double. If you want to use double, if you want to use just um, integer, I think that's fine too. We'll just go with integer. We we'll just assume it's whole numbers, like, you know, 100 calories and, and so on. So you could hear calorie. Um, per a slice of bread, okay? Because a sandwich is made up of two slices. So this is about one slice. 
And when we do the calculation, if you go back to the instruction, it asks you to multiply this slice uh, calorie per um, uh, by two to get the two slices, right? So we get that, and then <clears throat> put notes here. These are your data fields, and now we have a constructor. Our constructors here for both of them. The first one is the blank constructor. You need that, and the other one is the one that kind of have both uh, parameters. So the string for the bread type, and then the int for the calorie per slice. <clears throat> and then down here we have our getters and setter methods. And just use the shortcut to do that for you. Okay, and then we can use those to set our properties. So this that set bread type bread this that set calc per slice calc per slice okay so this part is pretty much done i think it asks you to also create a um, a static field called model i think uh, we can just do that right here uh, let me see where they put it though. i don't remember the instructions uh yeah, include a public final stack string for model initialize it to the staff of life I think that's the only one, right? Yeah. This is just for uh, practicing using static data. I mean, it has very little meaning in here, but we just put it here. So this is going to be private. Is it private or public? Public. Okay, we'll make this public. Public static final model is going to be assigned to the string, the staff of life. Okay. Um, <clears throat> string. Okay. So that's our field. Okay, so this part is done. Let's go over to the sandwich filling. This will be kind of similar. These are your data fields. A private uh, string for the sandwich. Um, you can call it just make a short filling type, and then private um, int uh, filling. Maybe calorie per filling. Okay, something like that will be fine. And then our constructors. This is the empty constructor. This is the one with this two parameters. Okay, and then we're going to set them so again the setter, getter and setter methods. Use the shortcut. And just fill those. Okay, so this is done. And then we are done with this too, I'm, I think. Let's go to the sandwich. This one here is going to have the data fields here as well. And uh, it just basically has two fields. Okay, these are uh, used for composition. Remember, compositions are when you use a data field as a type of another class. So we have the bread here for the bread class. And then we have the sandwich filling for the sandwich filling class object. And then um, I notice I did not instantiate it right away. You can if you want to. You could do like new bread like this. Only thing is that if you do it this way, then um, you have to manually add the 
update the content to the class, right? Because you already pre-declared here. Um, but if you're gonna, if you want to wait, and then in the constructor, you'll see in a minute how you can actually make it a little bit uh, faster. So in here, are my constructors. So I'll do um, just put two constructors. This is the empty constructor, and this is the one that has all the parameters. So bread would be bread again, and then sandwich filling. Sandwich filling. And then, so again, just like before, getter and setter methods. Okay. So now remember that these are objects. Okay, these are not um, primitive type. So when you return a bread, you actually return the object of this bread class. So if you want to print later, you have to go through the get bread function dot, and then go to the bread class to get those information. All right. So let's set these with the bread, and then this that set sandwich filling with the filling and then okay notice that when I set the the uh, bread and the filling they come in as a, an object that means that the uh, the fields when you create this these um, bread and the sandwich filling objects they would have already been set to have all this information the the, the type and then the calories in order for this to work. Okay, you have one option here. This is option number two. And and I put here, um, uh, this is the default constructor. I'm just put another one here, okay? So you can see the difference here. The, um, I guess the power of using um, constructor overloads. So we have another one here, sandwich. This time I'm gonna, I'm gonna put something very different. So, what do I need for the bread? Well, the bread needs two things, a string for the type, and then a integer for the calorie. The filling is the same thing, right? A string and then calorie per serving. So this option can give the, um, uh, the developer or user to provide both information instantly. So I can say something like this. So I need the string for the bread name or bread type, I need one for the um, uh, maybe calorie per slice of bread. Okay, these two uh, will be passed to the bread class, and then the next two will be passed to the sandwich filling class. So for string, um, you know, filling type, and then the int cal per filling. So if you think about it, these are right the same variables I use over here. Okay, so I'm going to pass them to this to this class when I create the objects. And then here, now notice because I did not instantiate the bread object yet. Right, so you need to instantiate the bread object in order to um, to make it work. Um, in this case, this part here, because I'm passing in as an object already, so the bread object has already been created. So you don't need to create that, right? Uh, but here I have to do that. So what I mean is I have to say bread is new bread. And, th and this is why I mentioned earlier that you don't want to do up here. If you did up here, that you can't, you don't have this option, right? Because I haven't, you know, created my object yet. I'm just declaring or defining a, a placeholder to hold the bread object. So it doesn't exist until I uh, either assign it to an existing bread already, or I create it right here. And so when I do this way, I just pass in the bread type and then the calorie per slice. And then now my bread has been my bread object has been created because this bread object is this bread object here, right? <clears throat> and then I can also do, so in this case, you can do bread or you, you can do this dot bread. Okay, it's actually safer to do this dot bread. And then this dot sandwich filling is new sandwich filling. 
and I pass in the filling type and then the count per filling. And there we go. I have my two objects created. Oops, I have too many um, parentheses in here. Okay, so my two objects are created and then now they are assigned with those two objects. So we have three options to create, right? <clears throat> All right, so go back to my other question was, if I did not do this down here, say if I did this, I just do the bread part, okay? If I did that, then I cannot uh, redeclare this again. It's already declared up here. So in that case, then I have to do something like this. I have to say bread, you know, um, set bread type, and then pass in the bread type. And then bread dot set calorie per slice and then kelp per slice. So you have to do it that way, right? You have to call the functions to set them this way. Whereas if you did not, you know, create them yet, you did not instantiate is the term, then you can just pass these two properties or um, arguments directly to the bread class, right? So that's the difference. So I'm going to go back to what I had earlier. And we'll keep it this this way. Okay, so this is done. And then now we need to go to the main program and do our um, action here. So we have the main method. And inside we're going to create um, three sandwiches. But I also ask you to create two functions. This will be two functions. And again, since we're not creating objects of this sandwich class, you test sandwich class, you want to call this function directly within the static main. Remember, static can only call static functions. So this function has to be static. Static, and this is be for uh, uses for the uh, calorie uh, calculation. So let me see what my what I have here for the output. Okay, so it says um, down here, a method to calculate total calories in the sandwich. And then it says the uh, sandwich has two slices of bread. Okay, And this, this method should take two parameters, the bread and the sandwich filling. Okay, and they have write another method to display the data. So the display here would we'll see what you see here. Okay, so I see that my calories are in uh, in double or decimal numbers. Um, if that's the case, then you can just easily go back and change it to decimal. Uh, maybe we should do that. Maybe just make more sense. Okay, so um, uh, we can just change it to double. Only things if I do that I have to change it everywhere else. Here, uh, down here. Okay, and then not that bad double, double, and then, yeah, this is, this is fine. It's just in, in here. I have to have double here, and then double here. So um, we're good. Oh, yeah, and the constructor too. So in here, double, and then double here. Um, what do I have? Per slice, double. Yeah, that's fine. Why is it red? Yeah, oh, maybe my sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine. Maybe just out here. Um, so double, uh, calculate. Uh, total calories and it takes two parameters bread and sandwich filling it's a long one those are two objects okay now I have an error here why is that um, cal per slice what's wrong with this with this one Oh, one more here. Yep, inside the function parentheses. Okay, 
So now we got that, and then we're going to return the uh, total calories. So I'll put here total. Okay, so we're going to declare a variable here called a double and then total. And this is going to be assigned with something. Okay, so what is the total going to be like? For now, let's put zero here for now. So we're going to do a calculation of the bread um, calories. Right, times two plus the sandwich calories. So it's pretty pretty simple, right? So I can replace this actually, replace it now since I know where it is. Bread dot get calorie per slice times two for this one. And then plus and I'm gonna times two first, right? I don't want to times the other one. Times two for that, and then plus the sandwich filling dot get calorie only one for that one. And then I return the total to wherever it's being called. So that's my calculate total calories. And then I have another one here to show the information. So this will be a void. I'm not, you know, uh, returning anything here. So what does it say? Um, it just say display data. So you don't, you don't have a name here. You can call it whatever you want. So we call it, you know, um, show or just say print result. Okay, so what do we need to pass in here? Well, maybe kind of similar thing, right? I need to print the bread and then print the filling because I need to access those. So we put here bread. No, actually, you know what? I'm not going to print the bread. I'm going to print the sandwich. So it'll be the sandwich object because the sandwich contains both the bread and the filling already, right? So you don't do pass those in there. You can obtain this information from the sandwich. Okay. So really in here I could just you know pass in the sandwich and you can get this information too. Like I mentioned in the previous uh, a couple of minutes ago that you have many ways to do this. Okay. And um, uh, yeah well I'm gonna show you what that is. So remember about method overload, right? I can overload this with something like this. Okay, just the sandwich. But here I would say sandwich dot get bread get calories. Okay? And then here will be same thing. So uh, sandwich dot get sandwich filling dot get calories. And I should have a wrap. So you can see the different ways how to do this, right? So I have two functions now, and um, they are both return the same information. Here I'm passing two objects. Here I'm just passing one object because this one here contains both already. Okay, so either one of those will work. Yeah, I'll just leave it here because um, it should work. Now this part down here for display. So I'm passing in this just a sandwich because I, I can access all this information here. So here then we're going to print um, a, uh, a message. This is the uh, model. So the model will be sandwich dot um, bread. It's in the bread class dot get model. And I, th I think I didn't have a, a getter for that one, but it'll be just model. Okay, you notice if I do that, I didn't have a, a getter. And the reason why is because it it's set to public, right? It's, if it's set to public, then there's no meaning to have another function to, you know, return this. The reason why we have the getters and setter for the other types is because they are all private. And since they are private, you cannot access them directly like it did over here. Now you cannot just say, get me the bread type. You can't do that. You have to go through the function to get it because we we make those hidden. Thus the term encapsulation. Okay, so encapsulate means you are hiding information. They are private. Only way to get them is through a public function. Okay, but this is public and also it's static, right? And so that means when you call it this way, this is fine. It's no problem. But you could just go directly through the class, which is the bread class. So this is okay. This is synonymous to just do something like this. 
All right, I'm calling the model because it's static and it's public in the bread class. So you just do that. It's shorter. Whether I call this way or the other the other one I had earlier, you're gonna get the same information. And that is also why uh, static is being used like that. It's shared by everybody, anybody want to use it. It does not belong to any particular object. Well, I mean, it's in the bread class, but uh, any any data can can access that. So we got the model, and then we we'll have a um, a dash, some dashes down here. And the way I had was I put like here, I said bread or sandwich, uh, like number one or something like that, right? One, something like that, right? Now, how do you, how do I get one, two, and three? Well, you could do it multi lines, sys out, and then here will be, um, what did I have? I have really short memory, sorry. <laughs> So you have the bread type calories, the filling per serving, and then the total calories, and then everything gets repeated. But for this, for the second bread, okay, second bread, and it looks exactly the same. It's just that the name is different, and these uh, values are different. So that means you have to uh, call this function three times. Each time you call, you're going to pass that sandwich. But when you call it, it's going to print this. Every time one 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 one, you want to say one two three four, right? So how do you do that? Okay, and uh, again, a couple of ways. One way is you can use a variable and you pass a variable to this function along with this sandwich. You can pass another variable here, int maybe like a counter, and then here you print the counter here. So we we'll replace that with the counter, and then plus the rest of that string. So it would say sandwich one, sandwich two, and so forth. So we got that. And then here we have the uh, bread type and plus the sandwich that get bread that get type. Okay, and I'll go through that. And I'll duplicate this a couple times. This is the bread um, uh, calories. Let me just put it like um, calorie after your per slice. And then Brett just get calories. All right? And then here will be the sandwich filling. Type, you get the get sandwich filling type, and then you get the get filling type function. Here will be kind of same thing put here calories per filling and I get the same information here get sandwich filling that get calories per filling okay and then one more down here I'm going to get the total calories this is for the sandwich okay so we're going to add um, and get that information from where from one of these functions and either one you want to use it's fine so we'll try the first one first so that says um, calculate calories you pass in the sandwich right so that should return the total calories because we'll be turned the total here and if you call the other function then you just pass in the bread and sandwich and since we don't have the bread and sandwich how do I do that so I'm going to print here uh, just to show you two ways okay this is method one this is the method two. And so this one here, you have to pass two objects to it. So the first one is the bread. So you can say sandwich dot get bread. Remember, the get bread function returns the object, the bread object, which is the same as bread. The second is sandwich get sandwich filling. So you get those two objects passed to this function. And now they are satisfied, and you're going to get the same result down here. Okay, so these are uh, done. Now we need to go to the main method and start creating our objects. And so you want to instantiate three sandwiches. So we call it uh, sandwich, um, sandwich one, get new sandwich. 
So we have um, three options, right? <clears throat> As you can see, actually two options. One is the empty one, and one is, I think we have, let me see. We have three options. Not sure what it's not showing, but um, uh, yeah, we have no parameter. One has the bread and the other one. I mean, you can always go back here and see it. We have we have three of them. The empty one, one has the bread and sandwich object, and then one has the value for each of those. So you can choose any one you want. And um, the less the lesser one you choose, the more you have to add more data. The the more you choose, you have to you can you know quickly create those in there. So if you choose uh, the first one, <clears throat> then you have to create each object because they were not created yet, right? So that means I'll, I'll do one of each so you can see. So this one here chooses this option. So that means I need to go and satisfy the bread and the filling object because it's not filled, right? Nothing is set. So in this case, I have to say uh, sandwich one, Okay, um, I have to create a, a new sandwich, a uh, new bread for that. So I can't really do this one yet. I have to say, um, you know, but bread, and then let's call it bread one is new bread. And we'll put the uh, information here. So the type will be uh, like rye, and say this one has 50 calories. And then, uh, and then I can I can add that to my sandwich, but I also need the filling. So sandwich filling, sandwich filling one equals new sandwich filling. And I can pass in again. This is the um, say eggs, and then calories would be a hundred. And so I have my two objects. Now these two objects can be passed to my sandwich now, but I can't because I already created. So I have to use the sandwich one to set the bread. I pass in the bread one. It's sandwich one that set filling, pass in the filling one. Okay, so all of these uh, uh, lines are, are used only to create this single single sandwich bread. And for now, we'll just leave that for now. And if you want to print the result, you can just say um, print result. I pass in the sandwich one and uh, see what happens. And also the counter, right? because we added a counter. So this is bread number one, so you just put here one. Okay, so if I save this now and run this program, hopefully there are no errors, and see what it gives us. Okay, so here we go. We have the uh, static data, and then we have the sandwich one, Right, we had the bread type and the eggs and so on. So the calories you can see is exactly the same, whichever function you use. All right. So that's the first method to do that. Now, what about the second method? The second method is to call the second uh, constructor. So here's sandwich two. Okay. So sandwich, and then sandwich two is new sandwich. This time we're gonna pass in the sandwich, and then the bread uh, filling. Okay. <clears throat> oh, not sandwich, I mean bread. That's what it means. That means I have to create this again, because I don't want you to sing one, but I, I'm going to copy this too, and I'll just put it right here, um, right above here, okay? Because you need to create those first. So this will be the number two. And we'll call this um, white bread uh, 670, and then this is like salad. And then since salad is healthy, we'll put here like uh, 60. Okay, so now I passed in the bread 2 and the filling 2. So I created my second sandwich, and I can print that out right here. And this will be the sandwich number 2, and so I pass in the parameter 2, argument 2. Okay, so if I run it now, I'm going to get two results. So here we go. The first one is what we had earlier, the rye. 
the second and notice it says number two now right and then it has this information and surprisingly enough at the same uh, calories and just to make sure this is true okay because remember we have to double the slice to um, to uh, times two so you're gonna get 40 out of that right I mean 140 so 140 plus 60 you get 200 same thing here if I double that I get 100 and 100 plus 100 well interesting okay so that's the method number two now here is method number three sandwich three so this time you're going to pass in this information directly to the constructor so I would say sandwich sandwich three three is new sandwich pass in the first is for the bread so let's call this um, what do we have um, right wait, so we'll call this the wheat and this one has um, maybe like 25 calories per slice and then the type will be uh, potato and then this one has let's say 80 80 calories not 800 <laughs> so you can see this much shorter I'm done and then I just print the result print the result of sandwich three and uh, and then the counter will be three so there you go so um, run and as you can see I have my the uh, first sandwich the second and my third right so you can see how your code get shorter and shorter if you have these constructors here and here because I did not I have to um, uh, pass in both objects that means they have to be created first before you can actually pass them in here this one is the most tedious one because I use the shortest one but then I end up creating my new bread object and then my filling object and then you pass those objects into that you set each of those individually so you can see there's a lot more to do there uh, but either way either one of these will work and of course you can always refactor these this is um, you can always refactor and make it a little bit shorter like this part here I can make it so that it will look something similar to this okay just to show you how that works I can go here and um, I'll use this sandwich uh, same name well, let's let's put sandwich four, okay? But I'm I'm going to use uh, something similar, what like like these here. So when it says sandwich four is new sandwich, I'm going to pass in two objects. So instead of you know uh, declaring them this way, I could put this inside here. Inside here, that's the new bread object. The second object is just this part. So there we go. I have my fourth bread, and yeah, it's it's a little bit longer inside here. But I need to instantiate a bread object, and then instantiate a new sandwich filling object. Yeah, that's a way I can hide these inf this uh, information here and make it make my code look really long. But uh, actually, it's not this long. All right. So the reason why you do this is because you don't want to reuse this again so I'm not creating a variable here so once I run line 20 21 I'm done okay no more I, I can't access this again without going through the sandwich four object these two will exist because I created using a variable so once I pass those to this function here this constructor I can still reuse them again and because they are the same object remember they are just the same memory address. I pass that to the sandwich. This still exists. So if I make any changes outside here, it's going to affect the bread, the sandwich in here too. Here I can't. Here, once I instantiate that, I'm done. It exists inside the sandwich only. I cannot access anywhere outside unless I go through the sandwich four. Okay. So um, so by doing this way, you can see I have one line of code, just kind of like this one here. And this one here, yeah, has a lot. This is just the, um, you, you can't get any shorter than that uh, until, um, 
Yeah, because once you once you set that, then you you can't. Uh, I mean, you can you can omit this, right? So here's the same thing. So when you set the bread, I could uh, do this. I could do the same thing like I did here. Okay. So instead of creating this bread here, I just copy this. And you can put it right in here, bread one, and then this sandwich here, going to the sandwich two. So in that way, I don't need these two lines here. So it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. I'm just either, if I want to reuse it, I put in a variable. If I don't, then you can instantiate right inside the function uh, as an argument. It will pass that as an object to the constructor or to the function here. And you'll see that that should be completely okay. And I can print here the bread number four, sandwich number four. So sandwich number four and um, four and uh, two are the same, okay, because I'm using the same white here. But I can just make some uh, different calories. Say that this is, um, I don't know, chocolate. Is it a chocolate bread? I think so, right? <laughs> so it's really high calories. Okay. So here we go. And uh, I run. Okay, so here we go. The first one, as you can see, even though I changed my code, right? Everything's fine. The second one um, is normal, the, the white bread, the third is the wheat, and then the fourth one is the chocolate one. Okay, so there you go. And you might want to, you know, separate these with a with another line. It's kind of hard to read. And so when you do the output here, in the very above, you could put this out and then just leave it a... Um, a blank line like this. Okay, that will give you an, an empty line. So you can see that looks a little bit nicer. Has a little separation here, as you can see, you know, much better this way. Okay, so I showed you like how you can use this in, in many ways when you create objects this way. And um, so that's that's really Im important. And if you have any questions, let me know. I know I probably did more than I should have, but I do want to show you the uh, you know, uh, flexibility of doing all this code because there's really no single way to do it. Okay, I just did everything here in the uh, main method here, but of course, you can always refactor your classes to do more than we just had here. But this will do. All right, well, let me know if you have any questions.